Recife, nestled into the northeast corner of Brazil, on the face of it is a Latin American paradise. Skyrise buildings give way to beautiful white sand beaches, presenting you with the perfect mix of urban life and tropical paradise. Its numerous waterways has led many to affectionately term Recife the Venice of Brazil, and it's hard not to want to explore this city beach destination. But it's what swims off those beaches that has caused quite the stir over the last 30 years. Locals have been locked in a life and death conflict with one of nature's most elite predators, sharks. A surge of shark attacks from the early 90s well into the 2000s, and even until today, has left 26 people dead, with the rest of locals in Recife fearing for their lives. And it's this conflict that has resulted in Recife's 12-mile coastline being labelled as one of the deadliest stretches of coastline in the world. What's up guys and welcome back to another brand new episode and season of Shark Bites. Today I thought we'd hit the ground running with a video that so many of you guys have been asking for for about the last year. Lots of you will have heard of the shark attacks that are happening in Recife, some of you might not have, but I expect all of you will probably want to know why it's happening. So coming up we'll learn a little bit about Recife itself, the stories of some of the shark attacks that have happened there, and we'll get to the bottom of why this seemingly tropical metropolitan paradise is one of the deadliest stretches of coastline in the world. But to truly understand why this is happening, first we're going to have to take a look at Recife itself. Recife sits on the northeastern corner of Brazil in the state of Pernambuco. It's an Atlantic seaport situated on a few industrialized rivers, and it's these rivers and waterways that have led to it being dubbed the Venice of Brazil. It's very much an industry city depending on import and export of goods via their two ports that lead out into the South Atlantic Ocean. These ports are important by the way so remember them for later. Traditionally Recife is known for being the most important commercial hub in the north slash northeastern region of Brazil. This commercialization has led to it having a pretty decent sized population with recent estimates totaling around 1.5 million people living in the city itself and millions more in the outskirts. Because of its geography the city has been built right up to the many beaches that sit along the coast somewhat resembling the feel of Miami Beach or Surfer's Paradise in Australia. And as you'd expect, with the city being so close to the beaches, a lot of people spend their time relaxing, sunbathing, and swimming in the water. The three main beaches on this stretch of coastline are Pina Beach, Boa Vigem, and Piedade. All the beaches are sandy and flat and somewhat protected by a line of reef that sits just off the shore, which kind of creates a natural barrier from the Atlantic waves. Once upon a time, it was those Atlantic waves that were readily sought out by locals and tourists alike. The surfing craze hit Brazil in the 1960s and continued well into the 70s and 80s. But because of the topography of this coastline, it meant it was a great place for those working in the city to clock off work early and hit the ocean with their boards to wind down after a day's work. Although that surfing craze raised ground to a very abrupt halt in the mid-90s when the government placed a ban on all urban surfing along that coastline. And they decided to do this because of growing concerns around shark attacks. Before 1990, the area had seen virtually no shark attacks, apart from the odd few scattered here or there, but nothing out of the ordinary for that region of the world. Although in the summer of 1992, all of that changed. On the 28th of June 1992, a swimmer was fatally mauled by a shark while swimming off Piedade Beach on the southern stretch of Recife's coastline. A couple of months after this, in September 1992, another swimmer was killed off Boa Vigem on the northern stretch of Recife's coastline. And it was these two attacks in a relatively short space of time that signaled the beginning of what was to come. Throughout the 90s and into the 2000s, 18 people would go on to lose their lives, with many others being bitten, resulting in life-changing amputations to their limbs. From 1992 to 2023, there have been 77 attacks in the region, 67 of them being either in or close to Recife, and 26 people have lost their lives. Those are some shocking statistics, coming out at just shy of a 40% fatality rate, which is considerably higher than the global average fatality rate of 11%. It's nearly four times higher. The biggest chunk of those fatalities sit between 1992 and 2006, with the government trying to put bans on surfing and also increase shark warnings signs across Recife's beaches. But we can see from the numbers, the strategy didn't really work. Although in 2004, the Recife government tried a different approach, one that's not commonly seen or used in other parts of the world. They commissioned a project called the Shark Monitoring Project of Recife, SMPR for short, to try and protect swimmers from sharks, but also keep the marine life safe as well. The SMPR deployed a series of baited drum lines and long lines on the northern and southern section of Recife. When the lines were checked, non-aggressive 
bycatch species like nurse sharks or black nose sharks were released. And the more potentially aggressive species were tagged and released in deeper waters much further away from Recife's coastline. This is a pretty interesting tactic and one that generally bucks the trend for other countries who have had similar conflict with sharks like Reunion Island or Australia. They took the stance of an anti-culling approach, which is quite rare to see in emotive situations like these. This fishing program in Recife ran for 73 months from 2004 to 2011. And in that time, they had 11 shark attacks. It should be pointed out though that 10 of those attacks occurred during a two year hiatus period for the project because of a lack of funding. Yikes. So if you were just looking at the numbers, it would appear that Recife actually only had one attack while the program was active. Those are some interesting numbers and it shows that at least for Recife anyway, it might have worked at least temporarily. Although the project stopped in 2011, and as you might expect, shark attacks began increasing again. In 2012 and 2013, another three people were killed by sharks in the state of Pernambuco, one of whom was 18-year-old American tourist Bruna Gobi, who was swimming with her cousin off Boa Vigem Beach, and this time it was caught on film. Local security cameras had been installed on some of the beaches in an attempt to reduce crime, and it was one of these security cameras that actually captured the event. According to the officials, Bruna and her cousin had got into some difficulty out in the breakers and were on the verge of drowning. Lifeguards entered the water immediately to rescue them, and as the jet ski and swimming lifeguards were en route, Bruna was attacked by a shark. In the footage, which is pretty low quality, Bruna can be seen in the water when a flurry of movement creates a massive splash around her. The shark ended up biting her left leg and despite rescuers managing to get her onto the jet ski and to shore, Bruna was later pronounced dead at the hospital. Attacks continued after Bruna's death with more life-changing injuries and fatalities. The last of whom, as of the time of making this video anyway, was 51-year-old Marcelo Rocha Santos, who lost his life in 2021. So we can see Recife has had an unusually high attack rate for around the last 30 years or so, resulting in a high rate of fatalities. But what species might be responsible for these bites? Well, based on some of the injuries to swimmers and surfers and the severity of those bites, it boils down to two of the usual suspects tiger sharks and bull sharks. Both of these species have impressive bite forces, easily capable of severing limbs, and both of them are opportunistic predators, feeding on whatever they can to survive. Because reliable sightings of these sharks are almost impossible during the attack, scientists have had to analyze bite radius and bite shape to work it out. And these are two sharks that come out as the most plausible. But based on environmental conditions and the location of Recife itself, it's likely that one of those two sharks is probably responsible for the majority of these incidents. You'll remember earlier I mentioned that Recife is known for its inland waterways, with the city being predominantly built on two large rivers. Once upon a time before Recife was massively industrialized, these river systems would have been the birthing ground of adult female bull sharks. As we know, bull sharks move into estuarine and river habitats to give birth to their young, and likely would have had pretty healthy populations in this part of the world. So I definitely lean more towards these attacks being as a result of bull sharks. That's not to say tiger sharks aren't responsible. I'm sure a decent percentage would have been tigers, but based on the location of the city itself, I'd lean more to bulls. But that doesn't quite explain why the attacks began to spike in the 1990s, because the bull sharks would have already been there before. And there were barely any attacks before the 1990s as well, save for the odd few scattered here or there. So what's gone on here? Well, first we'll have a look at some of the factors for these beaches that may predispose the area Areas for being shark attack hotspots. And first up, we've got the population. 1.5 million people is a lot of people. And loads of the people in the city are literally a stone's throw away from the beach and the water. As we've learned before here on Shark Bites, when you've got lots of people using the water, you're going to get more people interacting with sharks. It's a simple fact. But when we look at the ocean conditions themselves, we can see a few more factors that might increase the risk. The waters off these beaches are pretty turbid, especially with the waves that are coming from the South Atlantic. And this creates conditions that are murky and cloudy, massively reducing visibility. So not only can you as a swimmer not really see the sharks in the water, they're also not able to see you very well either until they're basically already on top of you. Water visibility is a huge driving factor in shark attacks and it should never be underestimated. It plays a big role. Next up, we've got the water and beach topography. I always love talking about topography, but again, it's a big factor. Beaches like Piedade and Boa Vigem are flat, sandy beaches and they stay flat as you go out into the water. They stay so flat that the actual water depth remains pretty shallow, even if you're a 
a decent distance offshore. Having a look at some of these mariner charts, we can see initially the waters along Beauvigem are pretty shallow, at least up until the protective reef walls, which you can see here in green. And then something interesting happens. The waters get much deeper here, just offshore. Then they get shallower again and then deeper again. So from the numbers we can see, this is a considerably deeper channel that runs almost parallel to the beach. It might be quite hard to picture it from a map like this, so I'll show you a screenshot from Google Earth. Here you can see Beauvigem Beach. Just off the beach, the water color is greenish, showing it's relatively shallow. And then pretty suddenly it gets quite dark and then it becomes shallow and more brightly colored again as you come out the other side. Admittedly, it's not the greatest demonstration, but this right here is a deep water channel that runs not too far off the shore, all the way up the stretch of coastline, parallel to the beaches of Piedade, Beauvigem, and Pina. And it's this deep water channel that's facilitating the movement of large predatory shark species very, very close to the beach. Sharks patrol these deeper channels in the search of food, moving up and down them throughout the day. But because of their proximity to the beaches, it means the sharks can move from these deeper channels into much shallower waters very quickly, which is exactly where surfers and swimmers are gonna be hanging out. This ocean topography is undoubtedly enabling the movement of large predatory sharks up and down the beaches of Recife. And it's increasing the likelihood that those sharks are gonna run into humans. Pair that with the number of people that are using those beaches and the visibility in ocean conditions, and you've got three factors there that will lead to shark attacks. But hang on a minute, I imagine there's a few of you chuntering away at your screens right now saying, well, that's all well and good, Chris, but all of those factors that you've just mentioned would have been the same before the shark attack spike in 1992. And you'd be 100% correct. All those factors would have been the same. So although all those things might increase the risk of a shark attack, it doesn't necessarily explain why they spiked. And that's because there's an extra part to this story. One that involved humans meddling with the natural world, which may have caused a displacement of these sharks and caused a change in their behavior. Remember I mentioned way back at the start of this video that Recife was an industry and commercialized city, relying on its seaports to import and export goods. Well, it's one of these ports that might provide us with some clues to answer this question. About 10 miles south of Recife and its popular beaches sits the port of Suape. Construction began on the port in the late 1970s and it was officially opened in 1983. It continued to grow throughout the 80s, but the first major influx of ships into the port wasn't until 1989. As part of its construction and expansion, mangrove habitats in the area were removed, as well as the closing up of two river mouths. The closing of these river mouths caused agricultural flooding, and so the government demolished large parts of the coral reef there, which alleviated the flooding, but also probably caused catastrophic environmental damage to these estuarine and reef habitats, of which were probably being used by bull sharks. Or at the very least, they altered the marine biodiversity in those areas, meaning food for sharks became scarce. When animals are displaced from a habitat that's vital for multiple stages of their lives, they are of course forced to find a new one. And it just so happens there's some half decent river and estuarine habitats a few miles up from the port of Suape, the river Piripama, and the river Jabateo. These two river systems sit nestled at the southern end of Recife, less than a couple of miles from Piedade Beach and Boavigem. But the sharks being displaced doesn't necessarily mean the sharks were absolutely going to continue to move north and start biting people. But it turned out, as well as the building of Suape Port, there was a second factor that could have contributed to the increase in attacks. On the mouth of the river Jabateo, historically there was a landfill site known as Murabeka Landfill, as well as the Jabateo Slaughterhouse. Both of these sites would have been releasing pollutants and effluent into the mouth of the river. It was even reported that during the slaughterhouse's operation in the 90s and 2000s, they slaughtered 100 cattle every day, of which large amounts of blood and other effluents would have been flowing into the mouth of the river, whereby the northward currents that run along that coast would have pushed it upwards towards the popular beaches of Recife. The connection between slaughterhouses and sharks isn't unique to Recife though. A remarkable similar situation happened in Somalia back in the 1980s where a slaughterhouse was placed at the mouth of a river nearby Mogadishu Beach and doing so resulted in several fatal shark attacks in that area over the space of a few years. So we've got changes at the trophic level via habitat degradation, a displacement of large predatory shark species from their home, and then pollution and effluents being carried northwards in currents towards densely populated beaches with poor visibility and a deep channel that runs very close to the shore.
That, my friends, is a recipe for a shark attack. I think it's important to point out here that the port of Suape and the effluent runoff from the slaughterhouse and the landfill site are hypotheses. There's no way that it can or could have been proved that it was those things unless scientific studies were being done in the exact areas at that point in time. Of course, the company responsible for the building of Suape port refutes any claims that it's responsible for the shark attacks. That's to be expected. And the slaughterhouse was closed down once they cottoned onto the fact it might be connected to the shark attacks. But by that point, you've already caused that rain shift and altered the behavioral patterns for the sharks. It is interesting though that you've got a bunch of different factors there where the timings all seem to add up. So what's next for Recife? Well, it does seem like shark attacks are still happening there, albeit the last fatal one being over three years ago. The lifeguards are continuing to be trained in shark safety protocols in the areas and are even wearing shark repellent devices on their ankles in a bid to try and deter sharks when they get in the water. In places like this, it's clear that drones or shark spotters aren't really going to work because the water visibility is just so poor. So it's up to the government to increase safety and education campaigns for tourists and locals alike to help them understand the dangers of swimming in those areas. As well as this, there are those natural pools with a reef barrier that seem to be a pretty safe place to swim, especially at low tide. Sometimes though, people are either oblivious or simply just don't care, like this guy who had to be physically wrestled out of the sea by the lifeguards. And the crazy thing here is that while this was happening, you could just about make out what looks to be a shark splashing around in the surf. I'm also not aware of any more plans for the relocation of shark species after being caught by long lines or drum lines, but it did seem like it at least had a short-term impact on the number of shark attacks. Whether something like that could ever work long-term, I'm not sure. These animals aren't stupid. They can find their way back to areas where they've been removed from. And you also have to factor in the cost of running a fishing slash shark monitoring operation like that. It's crazy expensive. It's a really tough one to predict here. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen to Recife in the next few years, but you can be sure I'll be keeping a very close eye on it. What do you guys think about all of this then? Have you ever heard of Recife and its shark attacks before? Do you agree or disagree with some of my reasoning? I want to hear all your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and make sure you click that subscribe button below. But before you head off, if you enjoyed today's video, I think a lot of you might like this video right here. In it, you're going to get a complete rundown of Reunion Island, another country in the world that has struggled massively with human shark conflict. At one point in time, Reunion had a fatality rate of nearly 50%. So if you want to know how and why this happened, make sure you click this video right here.